presented by Church Tech U. It's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, how to use Keynote in ProPresenter 7. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Before we get started, if you've ever wondered how to add Keynote into ProPresenter 7, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, something like that, and we'll get started. So, Keynote, like PowerPoint, is presentation software, but it's not as powerful as ProPresenter. So, ideally, you would have uh, the pastor or whoever's using Keynote just make it in ProPresenter. I mean, ProPresenter is just so much better. If you can't do that, though, well, let me show you a couple of ways to show it in uh, ProPresenter, but know that there are problems with doing each way, and we'll go over those. So let's head over to my computer and take a look. So here in ProPresenter, I have just drugged the, the Keynote file into here. Now this will only work only in the ProPresenter version for Mac. Why is that? Because it's actually launching Keynote. So that is thing number one is this won't work on Windows so if your pastor has a Mac and you're presenting in ProPresenter for Windows we'll go over a way to do that here in just a minute. But assuming you're both Mac this will absolutely work. The downside is if, um, let's say you've got the previous slide up here. Here we go. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show this full screen because it's not full screen right now. If I click on the plus button or space bar to go to the next item and then here, you'll notice, well, it's firing up Keynote. And there we go. We've got it. But did you notice a problem with it? So if I get out of Keynote here and go back into ProPresenter 7, just to show you one more time, this is uh, full screen ProPresenter. You see that? Right up here. So in order for it to even do this, get out of this. I had to go into ProPresenter, Preferences, and then Screens here. Right there. And I had to check Show Keynote and PowerPoint Screens. That is something you absolutely want to do because if you don't, then um, ProPresenter will stay covering up the other software. So that's a bit of a problem. But as I've got my computer set up right now, it still shows this. Uh, when you have that showing, because if I uncheck it and go, see, not a problem. So uh, when I recheck it, it shows this title bar up here. So that's less than ideal. In order to get that to go away, you've got to go into System Preferences and then Mission Control and you need to uncheck Displays Have Separate Spaces. I don't want to do that because that's not how I use my computer but that's your choice if you've got to do that. Um, once you uncheck this I think it's going to say that I yeah re requires log out so I will have to log out of the computer or just restart it one or the other and then log back in or finish restarting it and then it'll take effect. So that's thing number one. But going back to this, so it shows you this. This is the actual output of Keynote. If I go to this, this is just a screen cap of the interface you've got to make sure that you've got the right screens in the right places for Keynote to put stuff where it is. And this is the this is their attempt at a control screen. It's very, very basic. So um, 
if you have three screens, then the other one will just show you a clock. Very, very, very basic. So, um, less than ideal, but if we get out of here, one thing that you should know is if you're on Windows or if you've got Blackmagic hardware that, uh, like the DeckLink Duo 2, Kino can't see it. If you have the Blackmagic 3G monitor output, Keynote can't see it. So how do you get around that problem? Or how do you get around the problem if you have a uh, Windows machine? Well, from the computer that has Keynote on it, what you'll need to do is hit um, go into Keynote, then File, Export to, and select Images. Once you do that, you can choose whether they're uh, JPEGs, high quality, smaller file size, PNG, TIFF. Doesn't matter all that much, although the PNG will contain transparency, so keep that in mind. I'd probably leave it as JPEG under most circumstances. And then you uh, click Next, and then it will... Uh, tell you where you want it to save and then you click export. I've already done that because here it is and notice that it just exported two JPEGs for me. Okay, so I click cancel. I can go ahead get out a keynote, take those files to my other computer if it's a Windows computer or if it's a Mac that has the deck link or um, 3G monitor, you know, the Blackmagic hardware on it, then what I want to do is I want to create a new presentation. So I'm going to do that, new presentation. Give it a name, Keynote Files. It could be anything, you know, it could be the date, whatever. Theme doesn't matter because we're not going to use the text. Uh, it's just going to be a still. Size does matter, and then the library. Um, I've already made one in sermons, so uh, that's where I would put that. I'd click new. But since I've already done that, I'm going to click cancel and then go to sermons. And I've created one here. Now, it wouldn't have shown these two uh, slides here. What I need to do is I need to navigate to where they are on the computer. In this case, uh, they are in my downloads folder under teaching media and text. Can I show keynote files in ProPresenter? I'm going to select both of those. Select the one then hold down shift to select the second one. Um, I could have done command to do two uh, or I could have just clicked and dragged to select multiple. So, you know, if I do like that, that would select multiple. So, going to go back to here. Now I can drag these into ProPresenter itself. So um, let me actually move this off to the side so that we can see a little bit better what we're doing. I can do that. Now if I drag it onto a slide, since I'm coming from the Finder or Windows Explorer, whichever, then it will assume that I want those to be backgrounds. I don't want them to be backgrounds. I want them to be foregrounds. So I'm going to click between slides or after this. Since I've already done this, I can write over new versions, use existing, and apply to all. I'm going to say use existing and then bring those in here. And now I have a keynote presentation that um, acts just like a regular keynote presentation minus the uh, the animations or any video files etc that are in here so that's less than ideal but it would show up on any screen that I tell it to show up on and since they're just JPEGs it'll show up in Windows as well so as long as I don't need to make a correction or I don't have the animation issue then this is another way to do it.
So that's how to use Keynote files two different ways in ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my Pro 7 Quick Start course, so head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick, and then you can uh, get that information there. Just put in your name and your email address so that I know where to send the login for the class, and you can just get started that way. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.